What's up guys, gals, and non-binary pals? Welcome to Art by Flan. Uh, today we have a piece I did of a couple of OCs that belong to both me and my roommate slash best friend. I call her my roommate a lot in these videos, but she's really my best friend and honestly I'm very fortunate to live with her. But we have two of our characters here and before I get into the nitty gritty about the characters, I want to talk about the piece just a little bit, the technical side. And let me tell you guys, this whole thing was a practice in procrastination. I, while drawing it, I really liked how it came out. I was enjoying drawing it. It was everything was going my way I just once I'd put it down I didn't want to pick it up again not because I didn't want to work on it but because well part of me would have rather played overwatch but it is finished now and I'm recording this voiceover way too close to my cutoff date for my videos but it's done and I'm very happy with it so about the characters in particular so I notice a lot of people on YouTube like to talk about their OCs myself included I have several videos on them um, but I notice a lot of them don't talk about the less favorable OCs. And maybe I'm just not seeing the right videos, but um, what we have here are two characters and they're less than ideal. Specifically, the boy. that His, his name is Rory and he is Maya's firstborn son. Um, if you don't know about Maya, uh, I have a little link at the top of the screen so you can see one of the videos where I talk a bit more about her. But yes, the man in this picture is Rory. He is Maya's firstborn son and with him is his Half sister. They're half sisters. They're half siblings in blood, but they're raised as full siblings. You know, whatever. So they're siblings. Um, his sister Iris. Um, the relationship between these two is very complicated and extremely unhealthy. Um, Rory is not a good person. <laughs> um, he's very manipulative. He's um, abusive to not like physically abusive he's emotionally and mentally abusive but he's he like i said he's a manipulator he knows exactly how to use his power to make people do exactly what he wants them to do and iris is a victim of this abuse she doesn't recognize it obviously um until much much later in her life after tons of damage has been done to both her and her future children and the relationship she's tried to form. Uh, Rory is also extremely possessive. Iris is his sister and in a sense he feels she belongs to him because as children they grow up around a lot of extended family and they were sort of the weird cousins if you know what I mean. If you're the weird cousin you know what I'm talking about. They um their upbringing was very different because they were direct royalty. Rory was trained, you know, like Maya from birth, to be the king. You know, he was sort of given that sort of nobility, that sense to hold himself to a higher standard from a very young age. The same with Iris. She was the princess. She's directly related to the reigning queen, which was Maya at the time. So they functioned a bit differently from their cousins who didn't have that sort of stigma. And so a a relationship developed between them you know they, they're very close because they felt for the longest time they only had each other and like I said Rory is not a good person and so through their youth and through you know growing up not only did they become like emotionally close as siblings but they also started a romantic and sexual relationship um, Rory also has the same sort of feelings for his mother, but they were obviously never acted on because she died at um, a pretty young age. I say young, the, the, the kids were adults by the time she passed away. But like I said, Rory's not great. <laughs> He's got a lot of stuff going on and it's not a result of his upbringing. Like I said, they were held to different standards as their siblings, but their parents still loved them very much. They treated them very well. Rory is a sociopath, pretty much. And Iris and the people around him tend to be victims of that. So that's sort of why this is a really sort of scandalous pose for two siblings to be in, because their relationship is not that of standard siblings. You know, like I said, it's a romantic, it's a sexual relationship. And so, um, I'm really fascinated by Rory because Rory is not mine. Rory belongs to my roommate and she's the one who tends to have the characters who are more, um, off kilter <laughs> is if that's the word I'm looking for. My characters tend to be very wholesome, very, um, 
very acceptable, whereas she is like the darker part of, of our stories and she's not afraid to make these, whereas I'm sort of afraid to make these kinds of characters, um, she is not. And so I, I'm really fascinated by Rory and his story and I'd love for her to write more of him on our on, on, on um, her own time. I've asked her several times if she would and she said, yeah, I'll get to it, but you know how it is with people. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm very thankful for what she's done so far. But like I said, again, to reiterate, I'm not, um, what's what I'm looking for? I'm not um, glorifying incest or abuse in any way, shape, or form or anything like that. Those things are extremely bad um, and do not, <laughs> if you're going through these situations, please get help. <laughs> um, but like I said, a lot of YouTubers I I've seen talk about their characters um, and they have, maybe I've just not seen the right ones, but a lot of them tend to leave out the unsavory characters and the ones that don't tend to get backlash for glorifying these horrible things. And when you have a character um, who does do bad things, I don't see it as glorification because fiction is a place where we can safely explore things that we can't in real life. Like, just because you write about, like, murder doesn't mean you're a murderer. Just because we have a set of characters who are incestuous and one who's abusive doesn't mean that we as writers are also that. So I just want everyone to keep that in mind. And remember, Rory's a bad dude. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like, uh, I really did want to do a piece of these two. And I'm really, really happy with how it came out. Um, uh, and I know my roommate was extremely happy with how it came out too, because normally when I show her pictures of my art, you know, she'll always have a few quips to say about it, but this time she's like, love it. <laughs> and, you know, I think it's a, a really kind of a good metaphor for their relationship. Um, you know, I tried to make Roy look like he's obviously leading. He's, he's leading this dance, he's leading Iris on, but she, um, Sorry, that was my phone. You might have heard that. Um, but she is not a hundred percent against it. She, you know, she likes to be desired. She, you know, she's the second child. Her, her older brother is, you know, the king. He's the heir. He got a lot more. I wouldn't say a lot more attention, but his attention was different, you know. And so Iris does love to be worshipped, basically. Maybe not that extreme, but she does love attention paid to her. And Rory gives that to her in spades. Like I said, these kids aren't the greatest, but um, Rory gives that to her in spades, and so she sort of overlooks the bad things he does a lot of the time. Um, their relationship is very toxic. Um, it is extremely not good, but it is extremely interesting to write and to play. Um, so yeah, that's more about, about these two characters. Their story is much deeper than what I've said here, but that's the gist of what they're, um, what they're about. Back onto the technical standpoint of this picture, I wanted their light sources to kind of be opposing, like the light was coming from between them, sort of like a spark between them. Um, and that was a great idea until I did the background and they had a spotlight on them and I was like, crap, I'm not redoing this shading. So it's a metaphorical spotlight <laughs> that's going to be on them while they're dancing. Because that's also a sort, you'll see it when the picture is finished, it's sort of a metaphorical because these kids were royalty they were the prince and the princess so they were always in the spotlight but you know all that glitters is not gold and they have this sort of dark deep harbored secret that nobody really knows about going on between them so you know i think i, I feel like this piece was a good example of that and of their relationship and I'm also really happy with how it came out on a technical point. Um, my I did line art much, much thinner than I usually do because I normally do really big, bold line art and big, bold colors, but I really wanted the colors to be more of the focus on this one. So we should be shifting into the final piece here in a few moments. I love to watch the thing tick by and then I can just get it right. <laughs> and there we go. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what you see, don't forget to click that like button, click that subscribe button for a new video from me every single week in your inbox. And hey, don't forget to leave a comment, tell me what you like about the piece, what you didn't like about the piece, all that good stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye bye